This video is brought to you by Crunchyroll, and viewers like you. Thank you. Thus ends the beginning of the year. Three months ago when the season started, I was... I was worried about the year as a whole. I was worried because for me, 2018 was one of the best years that we've had in a long time. So 2019 had a lot to live up to. But now with one fourth of the year done and a bunch of awesome shows on the horizon, I'm a little less worried. It's still far too early to see how the year as a whole is gonna stack up compared to last year, but this was an amazing start. Winter of 2019 had some amazing anime from a variety of genres to keep us interested, amused, and frightened for the lives of characters we've only just met. And today on Glass Reflection, we are going to be giving a brief look into the best that this past season has had to offer for those who may have not yet dived into this past season, or for those who perhaps quite rightly decided to wait until the end and just marathon the best shows in fantastic fashion. You know, rather than deal with all the numerous cliffhangers us weekly watchers had to deal with for the past few months. You guys are lucky. So then, without any further ado, ladies, gentlemen, and others, my name is Arcada, and today on Glass Reflection, we are taking a look at the top five anime from winter 2019. Let's jam. We're gonna start off with a semi-blind mention. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm about to recommend an anime that I didn't finish watching. However, that isn't necessary to make this recommendation because I don't need to watch the remainder of Dororo to let you know that it's one of the better shows from this season. I already know that it started off strong and also it's a remake of the original Dororo, which I own. You can buy this old version or you can watch the new remake if you have access to it, that is. This is because this season of Dororo has only been available for streaming over on Amazon. Well, historically, Amazon Prime Video and the briefly lived and more quickly forgotten Anime Strike Service were available for awesome Canadian peoples like myself. This particular series is not available in my region. So instead, I only got to watch it the couple of times I was briefly in the US over the past few months. I saw enough for me to definitely recommend it, just not enough to see how it continued. Dororo is a historical action adventure set in Japan's Sengoku period. It's not a story that's revolutionary or anything. Again, it is a remake of an anime that came out back in the 60s. But the modern update to the story's pacing and my god, the animation make it well worth the recommendation. You might have actually seen uh, this one particular scene comparison on social media at the start of the season. It really does show off just how far anime has come in the last 50 years. With luck, the series will be available on another streaming service before long, or perhaps home media, so that we non-American folks can watch it. But until then, just know that it will be worth our time whenever we can watch it. Next up on the list is a continuing series from last season. That time I was reincarnated as a slime. This is a prime example of ending off a two-core series in a way that feels semi-natural and not disappointing. Slime did this quite well. It's still very obvious that this season is not the end of the story by a long shot. And we are only on a bit of a break, but if you want a breather from your bog standard Isekai series like everything else coming out the last number of seasons, then Slime has continually proved to be a breath of fresh air. It's got good action, political dealings between a newly developed nation made up of monsters and, you know, the rest of this fantasy world. There are demon lords with both mysterious objectives and outright simple ones. It's a series that's not really all that complicated, while at the same time, it is detailed enough to showcase a fairly elaborate fantasy world in which our protagonist, Rimuru, handles all of the various things thrown at him. I'll admit that there are some hints at a potential plotline complication that was brought up in the final episodes that does have me slightly worried for when the series eventually does start back up again, but I will try to remain confident that with any issue that may arise, it will be dealt with in the same clever style as every issue that has come before it. With luck, I'll be proven right on that. Next on my list is Mob Psycho 2. Demonstrating exactly how you play off a sequel to such a weirdly fantastic series like the original. 
obviously Mob Psycho 1 is required watching in order to enjoy this second season, but come on now. If you haven't watched the original Mob, then you've just done yourself a disservice to your life and should rectify this problem at your earliest convenience. There are a number of reasons why Mob Psycho is one of the best shows this season, and hell, one of the best of even potentially the last couple of years. It's not just the production values that have come out of Bones, which, holy crap, they do not let up with this series, but also just the writing and characterizations of everyone involved, because it's all strangely compelling. The development that this series has for, for Reagan, going from this sleazy con artist to... Well, he never really actually gets rid of being a sleazy con artist. It's kind of his shtick, but the amount of humanizing that he goes through in the mid part of this season was some of my favorite episodes. And then there's the development of Mob, the story could have been so basic, leaving Mob as nothing more than a fairly time-ticking bomb dunce of a boy with so much power and little actual focus in how to use it. But the second season takes him far beyond that, and so quickly too. He goes from being this naive student who can't really decide for himself how to do anything despite his near limitless psychic powers to becoming honestly one of the most kind and understanding individuals that Bones has ever animated. Plus. The show's OP is one of the best of the season, which surprises me as it now gets added to a short list of mine for series that have an amazing season one OP that have even better OPs for season two. For best ED though, well that goes to our next entry. Kaguya-sama Love is War is almost the series I enjoyed most this season, but there are reasons as to why I wouldn't say it's the absolute best. It's an absurdist comedy about two very intelligent individuals who are deeply in love with one another, but who absolutely refuse to make the first move in the relationship. Because of this, the lengths that they go to in order to force a situation where the other must make the first move is stupidly entertaining. In the same sort of crazy style as Gintama and Full Metal Panic Fumofu, Kaguya-sama is a series that is not complicated and has no narrative twists that will grip you, nor any real stakes, because hey, when your whole narrative relies on the two main characters attempting and failing to get the other to indicate the nature of their relationship, the chances of them actually starting the relationship is next to zero, until the series decides that it's time to end it all. I really can't speak much more on this series without either spoiling what little overarching plot the series has, or just outright repeating myself from my first reaction video last month, but suffice it to say that if you want a series that is funny, carefree, and a guaranteed good time for 25 minutes an episode, then few other shows this season can offer what Kaguya-sama can. It is without a doubt the best comedy of the year so far, and is also contender for one of my favorite shows. But of course, I left the best for last. The Promised Neverland is far and away the series I have sitting in my slot for best anime of the year, unless some newer series comes to claim that title as we continue through 2019. I know that this is a statement that will probably send a bunch of the show's manga readers to promptly tell me how poor of an adaptation that this was, but hell, I don't care. There are so many parts to Neverland's story that are very spoiler heavy. It's not a series that you can describe to someone in much detail without accidentally saying things you shouldn't. Half the joy and entertainment I took out of this series was from the narrative twists and turns that the story took, and I found the presentation of it all to be extremely well done. It's the perfect example of why I love watching the anime for a story before reading its manga, because I can almost guarantee that I would have not enjoyed this series anywhere near as much if I knew beforehand which twists were about to be revealed. Are there things missing? Probably. That happens with every adaptation. But hey, now the manga is something amazing I can look forward to later, preferably with the soundtrack playing in the background while I read. Best part of the whole show to me, though? The series ends on an extremely solid narrative beat. Now, thankfully, that is somewhat unnecessary considering we already have confirmation of a second season in the works for 2020, and since there is still plenty of manga to go, that's nothing but good news. There's plenty hinted at in this story's first season that hasn't yet been explained. Objects found, relationships formed, and character outcomes not yet set in stone. Because if it didn't happen on screen, then it didn't happen is a mantra I am going to stand by with this series. Plus, the atmosphere that this show sets is stunning. 
I've made complaints against the use of 3D animation in other anime from this season, but Neverland is one that utilizes CG to great effect. And the soundtrack? Ugh. Oh, my god, it is one of the better ones from this year so far. The opening especially is one of my favorites, sitting right next to both Kaguya-sama and of course Mob Psycho. The OP here did an incredible job at getting me pumped up each week, which is exactly what it was meant to do. This is the only series from this season that I've watched multiple times, mostly to make sure that other people I know have seen it because I know that they would love it. So I can't do anything but recommend it highly as one of my favorite shows from this season. And it's the one out of all of the available options so far that I desperately want to see more of. So that is the list. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that if there is any show here that I've talked about that you haven't seen, that you get on that. They all should be complete by the time this video goes live, unless I miscalculated episode counts greatly. So get your marathon comfy clothes on and then just sit back and enjoy. This video itself was lovingly sponsored by the wonderful folks over at Crunchyroll who happen to stream most but not all of the entries on today's list. They also recently made some fan-centric documentaries alongside, you know, all of the regular anime offerings that they have. So check those out on the YouTube page in the description if you're interested. If not, that's cool too. Like, no rush, no pressure. But now with the winter season out of the way, it's time to dive into spring. N not today, not today though. Soon, yes, yeah, soon. Hashtag please look forward to it, but not today. And lastly, a very special thank you to my patrons who not only support my work in general, but allow me to continue to do what I do. I love and appreciate you all, seriously. Specifically though, as I am wont to do, I'd like to give particular shout outs to patrons, Joshua Garcia, Calhoun Boy, Sid Yamako, Rifen, Bonaparte, and Rune Jacobson for being especially awesome. You guys are great. And until next time, ladies, gentlemen, and others, watch more anime and stay frosty.